We will like to welcome you on exploration on the petrodollar and the looming decline. The term petrodollar or petrocurrency refers to the United States dollar that is used in transactions involving the export of crude oil around the world. Due to the fact that the dollar is the reserve currency for the world, it makes it easier to invest profits from exports. In addition, the history of the petrodollar can be traced all the way back to an agreement made between the United States and Saudi Arabia in the 1970s, which included the recycling of additional earnings made from the sale of oil. And despite persistent rumors to the contrary, the system continues to be robust. But let us pause for a moment and find how the petrol dollar system works and why it could be on a verge to decline. The quantity and retail price of oil sold outside determine the value of petrocurrency that is issued by countries that are major suppliers of oil. The value of petrocurrency also varies depending on how oil is extracted. Additionally, the oil exporting countries may recycle the excess oil revenues back into their national economies or invest them in the economy of the United States of America. In the context of international trade, the United States dollar is referred to as the petrodollar, and it is rendered to oil exporting nations in exchange for other currencies. It may be traced back to an agreement between the United States of America and Saudi Arabia that was reached in the 1970s. Under the terms of this deal, the United States agreed to give Saudi Arabia with military assistance and Saudi Arabia agreed to begin transacting the sale of its crude oil in U.S. dollars. The collapse of the petrodollar is a much less likely future event, despite the possibility that the Chinese yuan will be an effective alternative currency. Recycling petrodollars refers to the practice of reinvesting extra U.S. dollars into the economies of oil exporting countries, lending those money to the economies of other countries, or investing in the economies of the United States. The elimination of the gold standard on a worldwide scale led to the establishment of the petrodollar as the primary international reserve currency. Due to the fact that it is denominated in U.S. dollars, its purchasing power is determined by the rate of inflation in the U.S. as well as, if necessary, the exchange rate on stock markets throughout the world. Any financial factor or other factor has the same amount of influence on the petrocurrency and the U.S. dollar, which results in relevant legislative and commercial repercussions. Other countries pledged to peg their currencies to the value of the U.S. dollar when they signed the Bretton Woods Convention in 1944. In spite of this, on August 15, 1971, in response to stagflation, then-President of the United States Richard Nixon removed the dollar from its peg to the gold standard. In 1973, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, caused a sharp increase in the price of oil in a very short amount of time. The process of recycling petrodollars refers to the outflow of money around the world that occurs as a result of petroleum exporting countries spending their revenue on other goods and services. In addition, this occurs via the absorption channel, as well as the capital account route. In light of this, the importance of both platforms cannot be overstated when analyzing the increase in oil revenues. The former employs petrocurrency to fuel local investment and expenditure, hence skyrocketing the need for importing items and utilities. While the latter makes use of petrodollars that were not spent on imports in order to protect foreign assets held abroad, which results in a discharge of capital from the capital account. 1979 was the year that saw the beginning of the United States and Saudi Arabia working together to form a joint commission on economic cooperation. Its goals were to assist Saudi Arabia in its development while simultaneously recycling petroleum currency and facilitating the flow of American machinery, supplies, and utilities funded by profits from oil exports in excess of requirements. The history of the petrodollar can be traced back to the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, which resulted in the United States becoming the only superpower in the materialized unipolar world. 
After that, the entire world witnessed a number of destabilizations and crises that were meant to maintain the leadership of the structure of the petrocurrency. When the United States of America first agreed to provide Saudi Arabia with armed security in 1973, a new name was coined to describe the arrangement. In addition, it offered various types of weaponry and other supplies for the military as part of a deal that involved the entire sale of oil in U.S. dollars. In addition, Saudi Arabia would reinvest the surplus cash into the American economic system by purchasing U.S. Treasury bills and bonds with those amounts. By 1975, every member of OPEC had signed on to the petrocurrency system and given their approval for oil sales to be conducted in U.S. dollars. As a direct consequence of this, the value of the American dollar today accounts for over two-thirds of the total contribution to the economy of the entire world. As a result of the fact that the U.S. dollar is the primary currency required for dealing in natural gas and oil, most of the world's central banks keep a substantial amount of their reserves in U.S. dollars. To make this more clear, below are some examples of the petrodollar system to help better grasp its history and its place in the present setting. In the event that U.S. President Joe Biden maintains his policy of implementing targeted financial penalties, Russia may give serious consideration to withdrawing from oil exporting agreements that are denominated in dollars. In addition, Russian Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak stated this opinion not long after the nation announced that all assets denominated in U.S. dollars would be removed entirely from the Russian National Wealth Fund. Following the annexation of Crimea in 2014, the global community has implemented sanctions against the Russian economy, which has been operating under these restrictions ever since. As a direct consequence of this, Rosneft, the largest oil company in the country, decided to make the euro the default currency for any new oil exports. This was done to protect the company from the influence of sanctions imposed by the United States. The currency of choice for the future oil transactions that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, KSA, wishes to do with China will be the Chinese yuan. Both the Dow Jones and the Wall Street Journal report that these two nations are currently in negotiations to finalize a few oil contracts with prices denominated in yuan. The transition to the yuan, on the other hand, is going to be difficult and costly for Saudi Arabia. China is the world's top crude oil importer, importing 1.76 million barrels per day, and as such, it offers some enticing incentives to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Additionally, it has investigated the possibility of relevant collaborations with Saudi Arabia, giving assistance in the construction of nuclear weapons and making substantial investments in initiatives being undertaken by the KSA. Regardless of whether or not this likely transition is successful, the fact that it has occurred represents a significant historical step toward moving away from the use of the petrodollar. When considering the impending collapse of the petrodollar, there are many different factors to take into consideration. In addition, recent geopolitical events in Ukraine have revealed a highly probable end to America's monopoly in international affairs. This conclusion was reached as a result of the recent geopolitical events in Ukraine. By the beginning of the first quarter in 2020, only 46% of all bilateral transactions between Russia and China were denominated in U.S. dollars. Oil demand is expected to decrease as a result of growing worries about global warming and a shift toward higher use of sustainable energy sources. Consequently, a fresh method of financial organization. In spite of this, about 90% of all transactions involving foreign currencies are conducted in U.S. dollars. This accounts for 60% of the foreign exchange reserves, despite the fact that the country contributes just about 20% to the gross domestic product, GDP, of the entire world. Because many nations are afraid of what would happen if the petrodollar was ever replaced, the United States is able to impose its policies on the rest of the world with greater ease than they would otherwise be able to accomplish. 
As a consequence of this, the demise of Petro currency in the near future is a highly doubtful occurrence due to the liquidity of the asset and the absence of any other viable alternative. In the 1970s, President Richard Nixon of the United States and Prince Fand ibn Abdulaziz of Saudi Arabia came to an agreement that was six pages long and established the petrodollar. In exchange for the provision of military supplies and equipment from the United States, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, KSA, agreed to transact its oil business in dollars issued by the United States. The use of the United States dollar as the standard currency for international transactions involving oil is referred to as the petrodollar system. To put it another way, the customary practice in international commerce is to deal in dollars rather than any other kind of currency when transacting business involving the purchase or sale of oil. The country that buys oil, whichever one it may be, is required to make payments to the country that produces oil in United States dollars at all times. Several countries that are members of OPEC, as well as other countries that sell oil rely heavily on the petrodollar as their primary source of revenue. Even though there are persistent speculations about the petrodollar's demise, it is impossible to deny the currency's continued importance. Due to the fact that it is the currency that is used the most, it makes the investing of export revenues more straightforward. The meaning of the petrodollar has been covered thoroughly in this article. In this article, we will discuss the petrodollar system, including its history, recycling, and the possibility of its downfall, along with some examples. The following articles provide additional information that you might find useful. It would appear that the entirety of the world and its leaders have emerged from a profound slumber during the two long years of COVID lockdown and are now beginning to put into place all of the things that they had envisioned throughout their separate terms in office. We have been hit with yet another catastrophe at a time when it seemed as though the world was just about to come to an end due to the entire COVID forced vaccine boosters and unending testing, perhaps returning to some sort of normalcy comparable to the periods before the COVID. It would appear that the leaders of the world and the governments of all countries can only operate by jumping from one catastrophe to another in order to explain their appalling practices and lobby for their agendas. After all, how are they going to be able to exert control on the populace or the story? Religion used to be the opium of the people, but now it's fear that keeps them subdued. People are being led to believe that giving up their rights in the name of national security is justified while, in reality, they are only giving up their rights out of fear. As if it were not difficult enough to manage the headlines on Zelensky and Putin on an hourly basis, combined with commodity shorts being squeezed on billions in margin calls while banks puked assets. When the Wall Street Journal published an article yesterday afternoon stating that Saudi Arabia was considering trading oil for yuan for its sales to China, it was the metaphorical equivalent of dropping another bomb on the markets at that time. Thankfully, it was a bomb with a positive outcome. Alongside Russia and the United States of America, Saudi Arabia is considered to be one of the world's leading producers of oil. Since China is the greatest user of oil in the world, using the yuan as a trading currency rather than the dollar seems like it would be an obvious choice. Since the 1970s, when the United States was a net importer of oil, a system known as the petrodollar has been in effect. After some time, a natural relationship developed between Saudi Arabia and the United States, in which the former would sell its oil to the latter in exchange for the dollars earned which would then be reinvested in the U.S. Treasury market and security pledges. Since the beginning of time, the dollar has served as both the reserve currency of the globe and the foundation currency for all commodities that are required to be purchased and sold using dollars. The nations who purchase oil will have to first purchase dollars using their own country's currency in order to be able to purchase the commodity itself. After that, they will be able to sell the oil for a profit, receive the money from the sale of the oil, and then convert that profit into their own country's currency. 
One of the reasons that the dollar has been able to keep its status as a reserve currency is because of the steady demand for the currency. But if the more significant participants all decide to switch to a different mode of payment at the same time, the system is at risk of failing completely. Numerous wars have been fought in order to either maintain this system or prevent any of its participants from attempting to form their own independent government. As a result of Russia's attack on Ukraine, Russian banks have been sanctioned and kicked out of the SWIFT system. This makes it extremely difficult for Russian banks to purchase and sell dollars in exchange for their commodities, particularly oil and gas, which are considered to be more vital. But if Russia produces approximately 10 NEMT and China wants about 10 NEMT, it would appear that there really should not be a need for any dollars at all in the first place. Why, therefore, should the larger powers give in to a system that can be turned off at the drop of a hat? and they can be excluded from the group. China has been given confirmation of this fact as a direct result of the battle. They have been working on developing their very own version of SWIFT, which they refer to as the CHIPS system. However, in comparison to SWIFT, the notional value of transactions is extremely low. The United States maintains close relationships with both Saudi Arabia and the surrounding region. However, the most recent administration of Vice President Joe Biden has not done itself any favors by maintaining the strength of these connections. President Trump was a lot better at being diplomatic while looking away for the greater good, but President Biden and the Democratic Party have been more vocal about taking a tougher stance on them, not supporting their local war in Yemen nor protecting their stance against Iran and continuous lawsuits still in place against them. This is in contrast to President Trump, who was a lot better at being diplomatic while looking away for the greater good. The most recent statement made by MBS, simply, I do not care, in response to a question regarding whether or not Biden misunderstood him, is highly noteworthy. Since many years ago, there has been a persistent challenge to the hegemony of the United States. But one thing leads to another, and eventually everything will fit together. As is the case with the vast majority of empires, it is only a matter of time before it all collapses. To date, all transactions involving Saudi Arabia's oil have been conducted only in dollars. They have been discussing the use of yuan as a medium of exchange for a number of years. But make no mistake, China is extraordinarily savvy. As the world's greatest buyer of all assets, they can choose the ideal time to lay conditional demands in exchange for stability, trade deals, and commercial partnerships. They are used to receiving subsidies and payments in dollars, which enables them to spend the money in other countries, and the entire region, as well as its authorities, are accustomed to this practice. Will the yuan continue to be considered a safe currency for them to use so that they can continue to do so? The Chinese yuan is not even close to being considered a reserve currency, let alone a transparent one, despite the fact that China is exerting a great deal of effort to guarantee its continued stability. If Saudi Arabia were to follow through with this plan, it would be a huge step away from historical allegiances and it would also bring an end to the use of the United States dollar and the SWIFT system. The dollar will no longer be the primary factor in determining the prices of commodities, therefore the correlations between them will no longer hold true. Commodities as we know them will cease to exist in the manner in which we have been familiar with for the past 50 years. It's possible that a more gradual transition to a basket of choice currencies like the euro, yen, and yuan, among others, might be a more viable alternative for trading oil and commodities. Be that as it may, there is no denying the fact that the wheels of change have already been set in motion. The most recent events in COVID and Ukraine have merely moved that timeline closer to its ultimate destination, which is the downfall of the dollar. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.